Some of you don't know. If a nation gets everything right, or its politics wrong, everything is wrong. If a nation gets everything right, but its politics wrong, everything is wrong. Because with politics, you're talking about leadership and governance. And the foundation to getting politics right is accountability. Governance is about service to the people. And that cannot be achieved successfully without accountability. Public office holders must be accountable to the people. It's like answerability. You must be able to answer the people. That is why, especially in democracy, that's why they say democracy is government of the people, by the people, for the people. So it's about the people, not about the leader. So the leader must periodically subject itself to public accountability. And you say, oh no, they don't do that. But it's for you to demand that. I was just speaking to people and I said, that. the problem in our dear nation is that people think the leader knows everything. The leader should do everything right. No. It's like that all over the world. There's no place where the leader does everything right. You can check from what is happening in America now. It is the people that are demanding who want this. You elected them. When they were campaigning, they were telling you all the good things. There was something they offered. Is that if it's electing them is more like you going to market or going to anywhere to buy something. There's a promise in a product. That's why you paid for it. The same thing is the leader you voted for. There was a promise. I promise that if you vote me in, I will do A, B, C, D, E, F. That is what you're seeing. That is the, the brand you're seeing in that product which you're going to pay for. So I'm going to pay for this product. I haven't paid for this product. You take it home. You want the product to fulfill what you paid for. The same thing is your leader. I voted for him or her because they promised to do A, B, C, D, E, F. You must demand it and say, you told us you're going to do this. You told us you're going to do this. So we want to know what is happening. If I look at most of you now, you don't even know what happens to your local government, to your state. I look around here. Our states, our federal government, everything, have an annual budget. How many of you have looked and questioned those budgets? What happens here? 2017, budget of restoration. Everybody's crying. 2018, budget of full employment. Nobody has asked her about budget of restoration. What did we restore? Before we move to the next one. Everybody keeps quiet. 2019, budget of heaven. Nobody has asked what is restoration and what? Full employment did. How many people did we employ? We are now moving to heaven. And that is the crisis we face. That is why it does not work. A leader, like I said, is somebody 
you voted for because they had a promise. That promise is, I'm in Enugu. I want to go to Port Harcourt. So I go to the park and pay the driver. He's not my leader. He's driving me to Port Harcourt. So you can call it your vision. Your destination is Port Harcourt. So as it's moving along the Enugu Port Harcourt Road, you can measure where you are at any particular point in time. You know the destination. And that's why you went to that park and said, I'm paying for this. If he starts driving along Enugu and Sha Road, you're on the wrong path. That's what they said. If you don't know where you're going, every road will lead you there. And that's what we're doing. We have happening in our nation. We don't know where we're going. Because we don't ask the leader. We just jumped into the car and they are driving to any direction. And none of us is saying, no, what you're doing is wrong. That's not what we paid for. We must change that. It is about us. It's our society. We entrusted them to manage our resources, our future. That you don't have a job. You don't have this. It is their future that they are toying with. You have to demand and say, no. This is what you promised. This is what you have to do. As you vote, I voted for you because you promised that if you vote, the economy is going to be this. Periodically, they are supposed to tell you where is the economy, what is happening with it. I have served the people. And I made promises. If you vote for me, when I assumed the office, and I said to them, what was my first experience? There was no planning. And I was shocked. I said, no. How can we have a state without Ministry of Planning? So what I did quickly was set up Ministry of Planning. And I found out that we, we have no vision. We have no destination. And I said, no. We are going to have, ministry, we are going to have a destination. So we set up a Ministry of Planning. And what was our destination? We said, since we don't have any goal, we adopted what you call Millennium Development Goal. We said our vision, since it's properly articulated by the UN, is to achieve this. And we set up our vehicle for achieving it, which we christened Anambra Integrated Development Strategy. And I just used three areas of it to tell you. First goal of Millennium Development Goal is to eliminate extreme poverty and hunger. We did the first poverty mapping in this country with the statistics of where poverty is more in the state. And that study showed us few local governments like Alhambra West, Aya Melum, Omaru, and a few other areas of Alhambra State. And we did a study and said, why are they civil poor? Guess what came up? The greatest thing they need was access. Because they were farmers, they didn't have access to bring their products to the market. That is the reason that if you go to Anambra State today, there's more rural roads than there is in the urban areas because we needed access for them to have access to the market. And while we're doing that, we ask them, it is not about us, it's about you. So you have to question what we're doing. So instead of our planning and our budgeting being supply-driven, it was demand-driven. So what do you want? Because it's about you. 
Number two was the issue of education. We looked at the education. Remember in 2001, schools were shut down in Anambra State. And by 2006, we're not doing well in work and Neko. We're number 25 and 26. And we said, no, it's unacceptable to us. We must move this to number within the first 10. And everybody said, it's impossible. We tried it and found out that the things that are missing here and there, we decided to return schools back to the missions. Everybody said it's impossible. It's been done 40 years ago. But wait a minute. We can't do this again. Everybody said, let's change this, let's change this. Let's change. I said, no, no, no. You can't change anything. We don't need to change the drivers, the managers of the school, because we already have an engine knock. So if a car has break down where the engine is not working, changing the driver is a waste of time because you need to fix the engine. The engine is that we have to return the school to the original owners and fund them and support them. Yes, we did that. Within three years of doing that, we became number one. We moved to health. We found out just the third one is the issue of health. When we came to the issue of health, we were talking about primary health care, all this and all that, when we, we did not have one single school of nursing, one single school of midwifery. How can you do Doctors are here. How can you talk about primary health care when you don't have even institutions to train the basic people that are going to do the work? And we looked around again and said, how do we do it? We found out that the missionary, missionary institutions have school of nursing, school of midwifery, school of health technology, that we are not accredited. As an easier route, we partnered with them and funded them. And I can tell you, you go to Anambra State today, you see schools like Ienu, where they have school of nurses, school of midwifery, school of this, and the hospital. You go to Boromir, you go to St. Joseph's, Dada. you go to Our Lady of Lords in Ihala. You'll be amazed what you see when you go into those hospitals and the facilities they have there. It was us partnering with them. Why did we achieve this? Because we made it easy. We took issue of governance to the people because it's about them and allowed them to ask questions. I told somebody this morning how an elderly lady made me to pay all, all the pensions and gratuity that we're owing. I was telling them that story. Then I used to go to Mass every morning to pray in the church before I go to work. And this old woman, 80 years old, came to me and said, stop praying. And be old pension. So, you have to pay it. And God will hear your prayers. <laughs> and I followed her at home. And she told me a story of how all of them have been old. And what did I do? I had to check all the outstanding pension and gratuities. And we're owing over 30 billion. And we decided we must pay it. So that every month, we must find a billion to pay that. And in three years, we're not owing anybody. But that old woman had the courage. And that's what we're not doing today. I'm pleading with all of you to have the courage of asking that question to your political leaders to be accountable for managing political resources. It is not their own. You elected them. Election is coming now. Make sure you elect the right people. Hold them accountable. Don't be shy of asking them you're not doing well. Forget about fear. Because if you don't, if you have if you're scared or you're fearing asking the question, when they collapse the country, you're going to die anyway. So you're better off asking the question and dying with them now. 
when there's still opportunity to, to save some people. Hold them accountable. Resist. Help to reduce this culture of celebrating criminality and rascality in our system. We can't go on like this. When you are voted in, you are voted in to work for the people, not to use their resources for other things. Don't be part of celebrating their success. I told people this one. If you vote somebody in, we know who it is, who she is when we voted her in. In six months, if she comes and says he wants to open his house and do this, please go and block that house. You know where the money came from. It's your own. So we need the only way to make politics work is that we hold leaders accountable. You have no other, every country, wherever you are born, is your own. And we have no other one here except this one. So let us help and stop the abuse. The society we are allowing them to abuse today will take its revenge on all of us tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you.